Hi, this is Tweek. At a local farmer's market, I found a wind chime recently. And so cute, brass high, but it needs tweaking. I'm going to add some bees. Join us. Supplies you'll need for this project are, you'll need an assortment of beads, yellow beads and crystal beads. You'll need some two inch head pins, some beading wire, an assortment of hooks, tools to work with your project, and some black beads for the head on the bees. So let's get started. I was at a local market and I found this really cute sun catcher. It's, it's actually, these are brass beehives and they don't make a lot of sound, but I like the chain. If I'm going to tweak it, I have to deconstruct it. So I had to take it apart. And here's where I, I have an assortment of tools here to help me do this. This here is made out of some kind of metal. Now the hive said that this was made in India. So props to the people who made that. Isn't that just, it's just adorable. A little brass beehive. And then this is what I was left with. But I guess before I really deconstruct it, I need to make sure I know what the length is. So I'll take my little fancy measurer here. <laughs> and this one is going to be 12 inches long. So I'm going to make sure that's what I shoot for when I start creating it. And so while I deconstruct it here, I'm going to get rid of all this metal and the chain. Keep the beads aside. Thank you to the person who made this and I'm tweaking it. So we're going to get rid of the chains, get rid of the extra metal, and now I can get 12 inches of wire. I'm using the 0 .018 wire. It wants to do it that way, huh? Okay, we'll do it that way. So I want at least 12 inches. And I'm doubling up on the wire. So I'm using more. Usually I always do that, don't I? I use pull more wire than I need, but I'd rather have more to work with. So here we go. We've got our wire. Now I want to attach something to hold the beehive. And for that, I found these swivel hooks that I had from an old Christmas ornament. So I'm going to cannibalize the apparatus that molds it together. Thank you, I used you well. And you have this little hook here that swivels. I like that. So what I'm going to do is attach it to here but I'm going to do a little more modification. I'd like this piece here to be gone because I'm going to use it. I'm going to put a bead over the top of it and the beads don't fit with that ring there. So I'm just going to get rid of that ring. Doing quite a bit of modification to get this project done, but oh boy, nice. It's, uh, it's kind of fun too to Take things apart and put them back together. Okay, let's see if I got that off there. All right, here we go. I've got my hook. I don't want that hook on there just yet. Okay, here I've got a little teeny swivel hook. Now this little end here, that's where I'm going to put my wire. Put the wire in. Aim for the hole, put the wire in. Got it, we're started. And bring it all the way down to the middle, center of the wire. Oh, I've got way too much wire here, but I'd rather have more than not enough. There's our start. Now I wanna attach this little swivel to the beehive. So I'm going to use, I've got a little teeny O-ring here. And I'm just going to loop that through And then I'm going to loop it through onto my beehive. And I think I'm going to wait for a moment to do that. And I'm going to start stringing my wire. 
And this will be with an assortment of beads that came with, I like these yellow beads here. So these came with the actual original piece. I'm just going to put three of them on here and hopefully they will ride down over the piece, the swivel, to hide it. And they did. See? So now you're going to see just that hanging. Now I can go. I've got something here to guide me. Okay, I've got my assortment of beads. I'm going to go with elongated bead. And then I'll have to stop. I get so far and then I want to create a B to add to it. And then I'm going with a bigger bead. So I just I just dumped out all the beads I had and came up with a pattern. And then I have a bunch of little beads. Oh, little beads, where are you? Oh, you know what? Let's use some of these guys. Let's dump out some of these. So I, my pattern was nine little beads and then a repeat of the pattern I made with the little crystal bead here and the golden yellow beads. Okay, so I'm going to put on nine beads. I'm keeping in mind that I need to make a strand here that is uh, 12 inches long so that it, when it's hooked up to the final piece, they uh, hang in a staggered way. I'm basically using the same pattern that came with the original piece. Okay, now I'm going to add a crystal bead. You could put whatever size beads you want here. That's kind of the fun of this project. Dump out in front of you what you've got and just go for it. They don't all have to match each other um, as long as you've got the bees on it. So since I've got 12 inches to go, I'm going to put another set and then I'm going to add a B. Now you've got nine more of these little guys. All right, so here's our pattern. Now I'm going to add one of my clear guides. Where are you? There you are. You just come up with whatever pattern you like and then just follow it. And then I've got a yellow and a crystal. The same size as the one I just left. Where are you? There you are. Now I want to add a B. I'm going to add a B that looks like this. So let me show you how to do that. All right, let's set this aside for just a moment while we make a B. Now the B is basically a cluster ball that I use extra wire to come back in and add the wings and then use the head pins and a bead to make the little head. And let's make one. Gather up some yellow beads. These are four millimeter beads. And I need 30 of them to make a cluster ball. And if you'd like to see the link as to how I make this in a little slower, click right here. Okay, I know the sequence. So I'm going to zip through this. It's a five, a four, three sets of three, then we've got a two, and then another three, and then a two, three sets of two, 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 and one. 30 beads. Good. Now the wire I'm using is a little bit smaller. I'm using a 0 .012 inch wire. I was uh, making beads with a two millimeter bead. Whoa. So I'm still using the wire that uh, suits better. It fits better into the multiple times I go back and forth through these little beads. So I'm using the smaller wire, just a little bit smaller. Get some wire, get some wire down in front of you and pull off the first set of five and string them on. Get the first set of five, bring them down to the middle of the wire, 
try to match up your ends as best as you can and pull the end either side wire because you'll have a left and right side in a moment put it through the end bead on the run pull that through and you have your first little set of five a little pentagon of beads and we go right down the line right side left side always string your beads from the right and pull through with the wire on the left so here we go So we have one more bead to add to finish the cluster ball. This light wire is uh, very helpful in making these little beads easier to work with. So now I usually go around the top to strengthen the cluster ball. What I'm going to do here, since I'm using both of these wires to make the wings on the bee, I'm going to go two beads over with this side. And then I'm going to string two beads over. I just want these two wires to end up in the same spot. Oh, come on, eyeballs. There. Nope. Missed. There we go. So now I've got the top reinforced. And I've got two wires that are right next to each other. I'm going to push these two wires into that center bead right beneath them. Can you go one at a time or both, however it works for you? So we strayed a little bit away from my usual cluster ball uh, pattern. So now we've got a wire on either side and I'm going to go through either side of these where that came out. There's a bead on either side. I'm going to go, go through on either side. That's how I constructed my wings. Okay, now we're going to come back behind the next bead. See how there's a like a V shape? Now we're going to come back behind that bead and string through. And then you're going to do it one more time. Just go over that bead and string through. If I could see where it came out, oh, you got to get in there first. There we go. And what you have now is the wings. Now that can be adjusted. So right now I'm just going to let them sit for a moment and do the same on the other side. We're going to go past that bead and come under through the back side of the second bead. It's just really simple. And then you're going to do it again and you're making two loops and we'll adjust the size of the loops to make the wings you can see where they both come out now here's the tricky part because as i go to make a knot and bringing these two wires back together i'm going to work my way down again with the wire i kind of like the haphazard look there because a bee when they flutter i just i just think that's really cute so i'm going to push where i came out i'm going to push into the bead next to it. You're trying to hold this wire down so I can see better. We came out there and we're going to go back towards the front. I want to try to get these two wires next to each other again. Oh, and you know what? That works right there. That wire came through two beads. Okay, now I want to get this one to meet up with that one. So I'm going to come through this bead right here. Get your wings out of the way. And all I'm doing is trying to work these two wires together. So there again, they're in the same spot. Pull gently. So I've got my wings. Now, do I want to manipulate them a little bit? I think so. I'd like them to at least be the same size would be nice. And this is just a matter of you putzing around, pulling on the wire, 
So these guys are here ready for me to put a knot in. And if you like the looks, as you're manipulating the two little wings, which I do, I think that looks nice. Now I'm gonna very carefully put a knot and I'm talking very carefully because when you pull the knot, you're going to adjust the wings without meaning to. So I'm going to put a very gentle knot there. And then I'm going to put another knot very gently because I'm going to tighten it up, but I want to make sure my wings look the way I want them to. And I want one wing taller than the other. Oh, that looks pretty cute. There, I like that. Now I'm going to try to hang on to these guys here and manipulate that knot a little bit to make it tight. It's a good thing it's a bee, huh? Because you can have wings that are any kind of size. They flutter around and they move fast. Okay, so I have my knot right there. I'm going to use the tools to help very gently help tighten the knot. There, I tightened the knot. And there's my wings. And now I can go ahead and clip the excess. Clip. Now, I'm picking a spot near to the wings in the front, and I'm going to take two head pins, two inch head pins, Got the little bead on the top. And I'm gonna take them and take a bead, a black bead for the head. I'm just gonna push these two pins right through the bead. Okay? Now we're gonna go for that spot between the wings, and I'm gonna go right through to make the bee's head. I'm still putzing with his wings. <laughs> and I'm gonna take my curling, hold the pin tight, and take my curling tool. And I'm just going to put two curls into the back, grab both of these pins and just curl. It's actually two bends on the tool. So make a little hook there. I'm going to turn that hook upside down and let it ride into the beads that are the bee's body. See, push them in. And then I'm going to push the head down next to the body I'm kind of scrunching up the bee's body a little bit. And then very gently, because see they're hooked in, I'm just going to bend the bee antennas. This can get kind of slippery, but just be patient and it works. Very gently and shape your antenna. And that holds your bee together. And you just made a bee. So my bee is ready to add two our string here for the chimer, for the brass bell. And here I'm just going to go through the center of the bee body. And this where you could really pick any angle you want to make the bee sit in any angle. But I'm going to go right up the center through the back with both wires. And there your bee sits. Looking for the hive. <laughs> now we can string up the rest of this line and follow our pattern. So let's do that. I'm going to pause here another set of little nine little beads to go, but I want to make sure I don't go past 12 inches because I want it to look right when it's hanging. Okay, so right now, starting here, I think, I think I'm going to put the end on. I've got my ending to go here. And that's going to be the few inches I need. I'm just a, almost at 10 inches. Yeah, so... I'm going to stop with that sequence and go in to my ending sequence. I had some of these bigger beads, crystal, and then another gold bead. 
Then it looks like I have an elongated bead. One of the beads that came off the original piece, but since that's so big, I have such a big hole in that, then I'm gonna add a little, few little crystal seed beads just to give um, that bead something to sit on. Let's use this one. Usually it takes three to fill up the space in these bigger beads. See how it filled it up? But my crimping bead will not support. Okay, if I can't use one of those, fine. I will just use another one of these little guys. And that will give the crimping bead a place to sit. And it all gets hidden within that big bead anyway, see? Now, crimping bead. I've got lots of those kicking around here. I'm going to grab one, let it ride down. Almost forgot. I've got to put a hook there. Here we go. Now we're on track. I'm going to push this wire back in. I still have too much there. So I'm going to push this wire back into the crimping bead, back into the few beads that are there, hiding within the bigger bead. Oh boy, this is where I wish I had younger eyeballs. Okay, so I'm pushing that wire in to form a loop where I can hang. There we go, working my way in. I'm going to pull up on the side that holds the piece together. And now I'm going to crimp. Now that we have our loop there. And to finish that off, I'm adding one of these little, one of these little guys here. I'm just going to fit that on. This is how I'll hook the strand to the original piece. Okay, so that's what we have. Almost done. We have to attach the hive and another bee. Now I had made one. What I'm going to do here is just, this is one of those keychain rings that you can manipulate. And I'm just going to find a spot on the bee and just let this thing ride in through. You see that? Just let it ride in through. And that bee's going to sit however he sits on this hive. Now I'm going to, it gets tricky, but you can do it. <laughs> I'm going to get that same hook going here. <laughs> what are you going to do, bee? You're going to be upside down? <laughs> so look at our little bee is there. Here's a close-up look of him. And here it is, my tweaked version of the one I found at the farmer's market. So I'm going to just hook these guys. There's one. Oh, I love it. I love it. And here's another. Where'd that hole go right there? much better I'd say. We've got bees, we've got sparkle, ah, my favorite things. So if you like what you've seen here today, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and remember to ring the bell so you know when another episode of Tweaks with Tweak is coming along. Until then, don't be afraid to tweak something. You could end up with something even better. See you again.